Welcome one and all to The Organist's Dream. This is the sequel to The Organist's Nightmare filmed in this village of Wilton. I'm back at George Herbert's church at St Peter's in Fuggleston. And the other reason this is The Organist's Dream is because the first time in six months of you looking up my nose, I finally have myself a cameraman. Today, my cameraman was essential. We were heading to a church with no electricity, no heating or water, lit only by Victorian gas lamps, and with one of England's last remaining hand-pumped pipe organs. We made our way along the busy road towards the parish of Fuggleston, formerly a thriving village, but now all but forgotten except for a few references on road signs. The only survivor is this pretty 13th century church with its elegant bell tower and picturesque tree-lined walk. Welcome back to St Peter's Church in Fuggleston on the edge of Wilton, which is near Salisbury. The road next to this church does nothing to detract from this beautiful ancient building. I changed my mind about that afterwards. It seems sad that a glorious symbol of the village's past should be hemmed in and shaken by thundering traffic, especially as this was one of the most beautiful church approaches that I've ever seen. St Peter's is well maintained, but it's no longer used for worship. Seeing myself photobombed by a monster lorry with the ironic slogan, championing great British quality, I was reminded that every prayer and every petition here must have been answered by a car horn or the blare of a motorcycle. Nonetheless, this is a building of international significance. The reason why this church is so special is because the rector here until his death in 1633 was none other than George Herbert. George Herbert is one of England's greatest poets, writers and scholars. Though he only took holy orders late in life, his output includes famous poems like Let All the World in Every Corner Sing and The God of Love My Shepherd Is, many of which, as well as The Country Parson, were penned during his time here at Fuggleston and the adjoining parish of Bemerton. This is a beautiful spring day, a complete contrast to last time I was here when it was frosty, freezing cold and I was here alone. Behind the camera is Billy, my brother. The reason he's here is firstly to make this so much easier for me to film, but secondly because there is no electricity in this church. That means the organ has to be hand pumped. You'll remember if you saw the organist's worst nightmare that I came in here alone to see if it worked and what happened was I started pumping and there was some really high and shrill squealing sounds. Those are called ciphers or sticking notes. The organ has now been fixed but pipe organs are notoriously unpredictable so there's a chance that it won't work again but we're determined to make it. After various attempts to get the door open, including some input from Billy, we made our way inside. The building was a haven of peace, but we weren't here alone. First of all, we need to help out this little bird who's got stuck in the church and is currently resting on top of the organ. So I'm going to gently coax it in the right direction. It's a good start. It should work. Come on, Bertie.
Yes! So our first task is completed. We've managed to evict the bird, or <laughs> rescue the bird from the church. I'm sure George Herbert would have approved. The next question is, can we make the organ sound as sweet as the singing that that bird will now continue to make for the rest of its life? This is the church where George Herbert gave his sermons from. He called his parishioners to worship. He also led worship over at St. Andrew's Church in Lower Bemerton, which if you follow me on Instagram, I've included a little piece about with plenty of photos. George Herbert always suffered from ill health, and it was in the last years of his life that he preached here. He died aged just 39, probably of consumption, and was well known for his unfailing commitment to parishioners. His contribution here in the parish of Fuggleston is marked by this plaque. George Herbert, a lover of music and parson of this parish, 1630 to 1633. To mark the tear centenary of his passing, an organ was placed in this church. The last time I came to Fuggleston Church, I went up to the choir gallery, went to the left-hand side of the organ and started pumping. And to my surprise, there were squealing notes, or ciphers as they're called, which made it completely unplayable. What can you do? This is why I arranged this second visit. The vicar and I went back to the church and we fixed the organ. It was quite easy actually. You just go round to the right hand side, take off the wooden panel and even without any tools, we just wiggled the action behind the keys and that freed it up so it could be played again. It's like if you left a classic car in a barn for 40 years or something, you wouldn't be able to pull it out again very easily. You'd probably have to coax it out, bash the wheels to free up the brakes, something like that. Organs are mechanical machines, and it's pretty amazing that they can sit in a church for so long in all different kinds of weather conditions and still work. The best kind of music to play on instruments like this one is Baroque music. Composers like Bach or Handel or even William Byrd and then Purcell. So I chose to play Bach's Prelude in C major. The reason? Because you can use one constant volume and one single stop and it still sounds beautiful even though this is a tired organ with inconsistent wind pressure because of the hand pumping. In a way, it's much more lifelike and more authentic to how most organs would have sounded before electric blowers were fitted.
J.S. Bach's prelude in C major from the well-tempered clavier, that woody open diapason tone never fails to produce a beautiful result. Now, I couldn't complete this visit without playing a hymn whose words were by George Herbert. So here's one of my favourites. This is called King of Glory, King of Peace, and the music was composed by Joseph David Jones, a Welsh hymn writer and schoolmaster. Here's the last verse of Herbert's poem. Seven whole days, not one in seven, I will praise thee. In my heart, though not in heaven, I can raise thee. Small it is in this poor sort to enrol thee. Even eternity's too short to extol thee. So there we are, George Herbert's King of Glory, King of Peace, played in the church in which he was rector. I hope you enjoyed that sequel to The Organist's Worst Nightmare. And if you did enjoy it, do make sure you subscribe to my films. I have an interesting statistic, actually, from my last video, which has, at the time of filming this one, 24,000 views. Apparently, according to YouTube, 45% of the people who watched it aren't subscribed to my channel. So that means about 11,000 people watched that video, but they aren't subscribed. So that means that my work is not spread to a large audience in the way it would be if all of those people were subscribed. And I know that a lot of people who regularly watch my films aren't subscribers at all. They just see them pop up on their screen occasionally. So they're probably missing a lot of videos. Similarly, do make sure that you follow me on Instagram because I can keep you much more up to date with my daily routine as far as church visits are concerned, much more than I can here on YouTube. And finally, I'm never paid to visit a church and you can probably tell that my work is funded by donations. So if you enjoy these films and if you watch them regularly or if they really mean something to you, which I hope they do, then do consider donating a small amount to support my work. There's a PayPal link beneath the video, which I've put in the description, and that really is 
the best way of donating. I thought I'd end by playing you a piece of music which was actually uploaded to a film about seven months ago, before this channel really gained its momentum. It's from one of the most popular videos on my channel, actually. When I uploaded it, there was virtually no reaction, but it now has 190,000 views. And the hymn I played there is perfect for this season, and the reason I'm replaying you this little section of a video is because last week I played this hymn and received so many brilliant comments that I thought you'd like to hear it once more played at St. Martin's Church. This is Thine Be the Glory. <laughs> 